So we're now continuing our saga quest of our final journey with the E2000s. I don't know by the time that we've posted this review if we have posted the E3000s. We should have, but we have so many reviews in our backlog that I can't be sure of. Um, so yeah, it, it, it should be after the E3000s, but you'll see. Future Jason will find it and figure it out. Right, but anyway, disclaimer before we start with the review. So the final E2000s uh, in this review were provided by Brian. He bought them secondhand from some guy on the internet. Uh, we're not affiliated to Final Audio or any other audio store that sells final products. And I would like just like to say that this will probably be a short one because there's not much more difference of the E2000s to the E3000s, actually. Right, so TLDR. These are the E3000s with less bass and I would say a bit faster bass also uh, and it's a bit more how do I say this to me the midrange seems a bit clearer right so we start off with bass like we usually do um, so the bass on the E2000s are less than the E3000s they are an emphasized kind of bass and they have quite a, quite a huge punch in the midrange uh, not the midrange in the mid bass they have like enough rumble in the sub bass there's not much slam in the sub bass not as much as i would like to there's definitely more than neutral here um but it starts rolling off hard about like 30 hertz and below which is not bad um and i think overall as a dynamic driver i am the bass on these are quite fast i'm actually quite impressed they're not they're not the fastest obviously they're like more normal but with the quantity in mind i didn't expect them to handle bass that well i would actually consider these to be one of my favorites in terms of bass representation is in this price range right so now we're going to the mid range so with this emphasis in the bass this uh this warmth gets brought into the mid range so male vocals in general they sound quite nice um they're very heavy thick and notes are also quite thick they're never thin mm, female vocals are also very smooth i like female vocals on the e2000s i think in general the final series from what i've heard so far they've always delivered in the mid-range i've never really uh, like never had had a fatiguing moment using any of the e2000s so far but we'll have an interesting story about the final product <laughs> in our saga so look forward to that but anyway going back to the midrange so the midrange is quite detailed it's not the most detailed in the world that there's a mosquito on my mouse let me just they're not the most detailed ones in the whole universe i mean i think they do quite well i believe they actually lose a bit in terms of detail to the tin t2 which is cheaper than the e2000s but not by much i wouldn't fuss over it i think the overall tonality of the e2000s in the midrange beat it any day of the week okay so separation is also quite good forgot to mention that so right so now we're going to treble treble is uh, pretty much the same with the e3000s it's non-fatiguing there's not much emphasis if at all actually there's no emphasis it's just it's just smooth and flat it's not much going on here it's quite detailed symbols are quite okay and they're not the Hmm. They're not splashy. They're also not as aggressive. I would probably want them to be sometimes, but I prefer a safer tuning in general. So this works fine for me. Um, you might miss out a bit on how symbols, symbol crashes sound on rock or something, um, if you are really into that, and especially if you like your treble, and if you like it sharp. If you you've previously used something like uh, Knowledge Zenith. Uh, or any chi-fi, v-shaped chi-fi in general, or the tin t2s, you'll probably not like these. Um, treble extension also isn't the greatest, I think it cut off, cuts off around 13-15k ish, after that you can barely hear anything. Do, remind, uh, do remember that my hearing is limited at 17k, I don't have the best hearing in the world, although I'm still relatively young, relatively. Um, and yeah soundstage f 
funny enough because of this because this less base and I think this sort of proves my theory that less base contributes to a larger perceived sound stage so these are just a smidgen larger than the e3000s I would say so let me just pull up my graph if I still have it so the e2000s and the e3000s because of their open back design sort of see this, this the back of them have this fine mesh on them so they're not fully sealed actually if at all I will consider them as open back the e2000 sound stage are are quite wide so they're like about they're about on your around your head wide sometimes they can feel a bit wider but most of the time they feel like they're just around your head uh, depth is also quite good uh, center image in general if this were to be the center of my head and this is the front of my head they will be around here I would say it's not exactly in front of my head most of the time um, so yeah it's it's more around this region really Okay, so imaging wise though, imaging I would say it's maybe a smidgen more accurate on the E2000s, but again, uh, this was probably just because there's less bass, and I ha I personally have like um, to me the more like the bassier uh, and IEM sounds, the less accurate like imaging wise I can get them to be for me. Um, so I can get these to an accuracy of about 30 ish degrees, which is quite good. Not, yeah, there's not much more to say about that. Now we'll just go into build quality real quick. These are quite similar to the E3000s. Um, the shells are made of like... I don't know if these are actually aluminium or plastic. These feel like aluminium, but I think they're plastic actually. I think they, these the body of these are plastic. They have quite a short nozzle with like a sort of nudge here. Uh, the SpinFit CP100s fit on them well. These are the CP145 if you've noticed. Uh, they also fit well. These don't come stock with these SpinFits. They uh, by stock come with the final audio type E ear tips, which I don't currently have because Brian bought these just unit only, second hand. So that's why I don't have the box in it all that stuff but normally you would get like a pouch you would get a pair of ear hooks you would get three pairs of final audio ear tips with sml in size which i would say um if you want any comparison to a more generic uh, ear tip the final audio e type ear tips they sound and feel quite similar to the sony hybrid ear tips if you've ever used them um, right and they're I wouldn't say they're as soft as the Sony uh, hybrid ear tips, but they're quite compatible. Cable wise, same complaints with like the E3000s, they just they feel thin, they're actually they feel very thin, but they're not really microphonic so that's nice, they have a chin slider which works well. Using the ear hooks you can use these over ear, even without the ear hooks you, could, you can also do that, but um, actually these work quite well for me over ear. And because of how thin the shells are, I can actually use them to sleep, which I sometimes do when I have to take a nap. And the jack on the E3000s, and uh, not E3000s, E2000s, these are the E2000s. So the E2000s have an angle jack. So if the E3000s, we've posted the review by this time, um, the E3000s that we reviewed had the jack actually re-terminated because the, uh, the owner, previous owner had some issues with them. Uh, we in this in this unit we didn't have any problems so it's still in the ori like the original uh, actually no the e3000s the user wanted to re-terminate them to balance which FYI you can't because the how the cable structure is made in the e2000 e3000s is that there are actually only three strands here in the cable so if you're also trying to do that if you want to make these balanced you will actually have to recable the whole IEM. You can't just simply cut off the jack and re-terminate them to balance. Which is rather unfortunate, but that but that's fine. I generally prefer a single ended than balanced, so because there's less hassle and I can't really perceive much difference between single ended and balanced apart from the added separation. Right. So I think that pretty much covers everything I could say about the E2000s. Uh, we'll just, I'll just add in some comparisons. So I've compared them uh, a lot to the E3000s, but 
right now we also have the final audio E1000s. So these are the uh, these are the little siblings to the E2000s. So the E2000s are in the middle. There's going to be the E3000s. There's the E1000, and then from the E3000, uh, the series just starts to jump to the E4000 and E5000, which are in the completely different price range. They're nearly the E4000 is twice as expensive as the E3000s. Meanwhile, these are progressively more expensive, but not significantly. So the E1000s, I believe, retail for like, uh, was it, what was it, five, four hundred ish thousand IDR. These are retail for uh, six to seven hundred thousand IDR. So this is about thirty ish dollars. This is goes for about forty, fifty dollars, and the E3000 goes for fifty ish dollars, or less actually nowadays. So they're not exactly new to the game. The E1000 was a recent addition, but the E2000 and E3000 have been out for quite a while, so the prices have dropped significantly, I would say. Especially the second-hand market. Uh, so yeah. So the E1000s are... So it, it keeps going down. From the E3000 to the E2000 to the E1000s, the base quantity just keeps on going down. So the E1000s are an even lighter version of the E2000s, I would say. Uh, they're also a bit faster in general. Uh, the E1000s also sound... I prefer the E1000s sound uh, most of the time because of uh, how neutral they are. Um, I think I can enjoy more music on the E1000s than I can on the E2000s. And the E1000s provide some isolation. Um, but... Extension wise, I believe the E2000s win over the e uh, E1000s easily in sub bass extension. Um, slam in the bass, there's also more slam in the bass, mid bass of the E2000s than the E1000s. The mid range is a bit more pleasant on the E2000s. Overall, treble presentation uh, the E1000s I perceive to be a bit brighter than the E2000s. And yeah, and the E1000s are fully plastic. And they have this cable which is a bit thicker but I think they're less nice. They're not as supple as the E2000s cable. Also, another comparison I can give you is actually the T2 Plus. I don't have them, I don't have them out of the box right now. I have them over on that table, I'm too lazy to move right now. So just as uh, just a focal like comparison, the E two thousands are well. How do I say this? I most of the time I would get the E two thousands any day of the week, any day of the week. The E ten two two ten T two plus to me they have a bit of sharpness in the trouble which I can't really pinpoint where it's coming from. There's this sort of like ringing probably. In the treble of the thin T2 plus, uh, the mid range is a bit thinner than the E2000s. Uh, the what's it called? The thin two T2 pluses are a more of a V shape compared to the just bass emphasis on the E2000s. So the, I would say the E2000s are more of an, like an L shape sort of. The E2000s have a bit more slam in the bass, and they feel like they have. They also have more rumble. The E2000s have more rumble than the T2 Pluses. Technically speaking though, the T2 Pluses I would say are a bit superior uh, in terms of... Um, what's it called? In terms of the detail I can perceive in the overall frequency range. I can pick out the details more easily in the T2 Pluses. But overall tonality is more pleasing on the E2000s. Also, the E2000s are not detachable if you haven't figured that out yet. They're not detachable, and yeah, so if you want to change the cable, you will have to re-cable them, pluck out the housing, desolder them, change out the cable. But they're quite well, like, I would say these won't break easily. So you probably don't have to worry about that, unless you keep on yanking on them. Right. I think that pretty much does it for the review. Um, uh, I'll leave what Brian thinks about the E2000s right about now. Uh, like if you liked it, 
comment what you think subscribe if you want more content like this and i'll see you next time